Hello, so welcome to the third episode. In this episode, I'll be talking about the additive process chain. So I think this is very important because especially if you're going to use a 3D printer or if you're going to buy a 3D printer so that you understand what is involved in the entire process chain so that you can better prepare yourself and your work environment for the 3D printer. So let's go on to the next slide. So the process chain is made out of five steps. The first step is in the creation of the 3D model. The next step is the data conversion and the repairing that is done. After which the, the 3D model is sliced into many cross-sectional slices. And with the cross-sectional slices, the machine reads and builds the part layer by layer. After the part is built, it moves on to the last step, which is post-processing. So usually 3D printing parts require post-processing to be in their finished state. So that's the general chain and we'll move to the first step now. So the first step is 3D modeling. This is the most time consuming step as it requires a person who understands computer aided design because this is quite a technical skill. So 3D modeler softwares are usually either solid based or surface based modelers. There are also currently a large variety of 3D modeling software. So thus it is important to understand which software best suits your application so that you can hire the right person or you can learn the right software to to print your to design your part in the best possible way. So once the 3D model is designed, most 3D modeler software now these days can easily convert the file into an STL file format, which is currently universally used in all 3D printers. However, during this data conversion to STL file format, usually a lot of errors occur and thus one requires an STL editor to repair such errors. So examples of such editors are Magix and NetFab. So this is, this is also a very important stage as you want the part to be error free so that it will print smoothly. So the next step is the slicing. So each 3D printer manufacturer often has their own unique software that slices the STL file and then it generates a machine code that programs the 3D printer so that the 3D printer will print each cross section. So the, the process parameters that usually that users often has to determine is the, the layer thickness. So the thicker the layer thickness, the poorer the quality and the thinner the layer thickness, the better the quality. However, it's also important to understand what is your minimum feature that your model has. So you want to select a layer thickness that is thin enough so that the features still remains and will not be will, will not you you will not lose the features because your layer thickness is just too thick. So I think this is a quite a very simple step because there's not much involved in it. So let's go on to the next step. So now we're ready for printing. So this step is usually fully automated. So they usually just have the user you just have to click a button, place the part in a desirable orientation and press print. However, for consumer 3D printers, those consumer desktop 3D printers, use users often have to level the build plate first prior to the building process so as to ensure a very good adhesion of the print to the printer. However, for professional 3D printers, this is usually done automatically. So it is also very important to understand what are the build conditions, the environmental conditions that the 3D printer requires for the optimum print. 
So this could be something like uh, environment with low humidity and an environment with low temperature. So it's very important to know what is the environment that your 3D printer requires for optimum printing. So the last step, post-processing. So while the previous steps like 3D modeling, repairing, or even the building of the 3D part seems very office friendly. This last step post-processing can be a bit messy because the users usually have to remove additional or excess materials that happen to get stuck onto the 3D printed part or the users have to provide some form of additional curing to make the part harder or to also to do some surface finishing to the part so that the part looks aesthetically more pleasing. So one has to consider the facility required for this step. So that's the end of the process chain and let me summarize the episode once again. So in the chain there are five steps, 3D modeling, data conversion, repairing, slicing, checking, building and post-processing. So it's important to have a very good understanding of the process chain of whichever 3D printer because each manufacturer would require the user to have a slightly different process. However, the general steps are within these five that I mentioned. So with this, I hope you have a good understanding of the additive process chain and we'll go on to the references. So here are the references. So the framework of this episode is mainly gotten from what I've learned from my master's course. And then from the cover page, there's a picture of the Up Plus 2 printer, which I think it's a very good consumer level printer. It's by Beijing Tier Time Technology. And then the picture that show, shows the process chain is from a journal article written in 2003. So I thank all these references because without these references, I wouldn't be able to make this episode as good as it is. Thank you once again and stay tuned for episode 4.